What's up, YouTube? Y'all already know. Big Lou. Check it back in with what it do with Big Lou. NMG R2. Baby, baby. Bye, ya. So check it out. <clears throat> I'm going to touch on Saturday night's boxing fight uh, separate. The ma main event, uh, which was uh, Canelo, Canelo Alvarez and Edgar Balanga. And then I'm going to do this one as a co-main event, which was uh, uh, Erislandi, uh, Lara, and Danny Garcia. But I'm going to do them separate instead of just doing the same video because I feel that not only Lara, but Danny Garcia got that coming at least. From my, from me, from my perspective, from me coming to get his own video because of the career and the fighter that he's been the past 20 years, right, or whatever it's been. Close to 20 years. I think it's about 20 years now. So, um, so Danny was going in looking forward to becoming a three division champion. Um, and he came up real short. And if anybody knows, Danny's Danny just came off of like a, I think a 21, 22 month layoff. It might have even been 24, or 25 month layoff. Um, because they keep saying two year layoff everywhere I see it and read, but I don't know exactly. If, you know, because sometimes people, you know, people they'll consider a 20 month or 22 month as a, as a two year, which pretty much it is. So you know what I'm saying. Nonetheless, it still was a long layoff that he took from his last fight at 154, super middleweight, or excuse me, super welterweight, junior middleweight slash light heavy. Uh, man, I'm messing this all up. So the division is 154 pounds, and it, and it, they'll call it three different ways. They'll call it either super welterweight, they'll call it junior middleweight, and then now I've been seeing it being called light middleweight, and that all equals the same 154 pounds. So this fight, Danny came in looking to capture the middleweight title, the WBA, the WBA middleweight title, the super middleweight title, the w, excuse me, the WBA super title belt. Um, and they decided to agree at catch weight 157. So it wasn't quite, they quite didn't weigh 160 on the scales, but that's all right. Cause that was something similar that Cotto did when he, when he fought for the middleweight title and then won the title against Sergio Martinez. And then, um, I believe he only came in weighing like, he was only like 155, I think 156, um, when he fought, uh, uh, Sergio Martinez. And I think he was the same when he fought Canelo at 160 at middleweight anyway. So. Danny fought his last bout, which was his very first fight at 154. Now, this was going to be his first fight at 160. Even though he didn't come in at 160, technically it was a middleweight for the middleweight title. So, if anybody's followed Danny's career or knows anything about him, he's a two division world champion. He's held three belts. He's a unified champion in the uh, at junior uh, welterweight. So, if people know boxing, junior welterweight's 140 pounds. He held two belts at 140. Um, he knocked out uh, Eric Morales, took Eric Morales, then he did a rematch with Morales, defeated him again to retain the belt, and then he knocked out um, uh, Amir Khan and took his belt. So he held two belts at 140. Then he went up to 147 welterweight, and he 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 captured the WBC welterweight title, and then he held on to it for a few fights, and then eventually, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many defenses he had. I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think. I, I, I think maybe two or three off the top of my head. But then eventually he ran into Keith Thurman, who was it was a unified bout belt bout. Excuse me, I'm having trouble talking today. It was a unified bout for his WBC and Keith Thurman's WBA super. Okay, so we'll leave it at that right now, and we'll get back into talking about the fight. So, you know, I thought that he had a good shot, up, you know, a good chance of, uh, you know, beating Lara, but. If you know anything about boxing, especially Lara and the, where he comes from, he comes from the Cuban boxing, uh, the Cuban, the Cuban school of boxing. He's a southpaw. He's very good, crafty boxer, right? Some say that he beat Delo, uh, uh, excuse me. Some say that he beat Canelo from his, with his boxing skills, but unfortunately for him, they gave it to Canelo. So, um, you know, he's southpaw. He, you know, you know, he's. he's he got great mechanics, great, you know, pretty much, he's pretty much all-rounded, all-rounded fighter at, at, uh, at, um, 
you know, at his craft, you know what I'm saying? And so he came out, like I said, out of the school of boxing, Cuban school of boxing, um, South Paul. Um, if you guys don't know too much about Lara, Lara, besides him fighting um, Canelo, Lara also had, he also was a champion at the, the division underneath, 154, which is, again, like I mentioned earlier, super welterweight, junior middleweight, or it's called light middleweight, right? And he beat the likes of uh, Austin Trout. He beat, uh, matter of fact, Canelo's brother, Raul. He beat him. Um, and so he's got a few, you know, he's been around for a minute. He's 41 years old, and he's still looking pretty good, right? I mean, he made, he, he made, he made Danny Garcia um, gun shy, right? And that and that's been a problem for Danny these last few fights, especially um, when he came in the fight. Um, Thurman, he started off very slow, and by the time he was trying to pick up the action and, and he was playing catch up, I mean, he, he, in my opinion, he started because I was in my I was in prison at the time, so I got to watch that fight myself. Um, it was on ABC. It was on ABC. Uh, ABC Sports. And he was playing, like I said, he was playing catch up and he was, you know, trying to cut off the ring and, 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 you know, score points on Thurman. And he did okay. He did, he did okay. Um, but wasn't enough to get the decision. And the fact is that the way he starts and the way, you know, he started off real slow, you know, so Thurman got the decision. He won the belt. That was Danny Garcia's first loss. Then he goes on. Um, I don't know what happened with Thurman. What happened exactly? But he was stripped by the WBC for some reason or another. He didn't, maybe he didn't want to fight the mandatory. The belt was stripped. Now Garcia is fighting to grab his own belt again. It was a vacant WBC belt, and he's facing Sean Porter. Sean Porter now, same thing again with Danny Garcia. He starts off very slow. Porter is more active. He's more. He's more. Um, you know, he's more of the active fighter. More of the getting more busier with, with, you know, throwing punches and such, um, where Danny's trying to, again, play catch up. And um, the only difference was, in my opinion, with at that time was that Danny, um, it was different than with Thurman. With that fight, in my opinion, it wasn't as much where he had to chase Thurman around and try to cut the rings off. It was just the fact that Thurman was, I mean, excuse me, Porter was more busy throwing more punches, and therefore they awarded him the fight based off of him being more active because he threw more punches, which I don't believe that what is, we're not in amateurs. That shouldn't matter. I mean, you throw two, if you throw a hundred punches more or 200 punches more, but yet only 14 land or so 14%. So 28 punches land out of 200, you know what I'm saying? I don't see how that really comes into play. Right. I mean, now we're amateur, they're amateurs. I don't, they don't understand, but or in the Olympics. Okay. But they're not, they're professional fighters. Anyways, Porter got the nod, he got the belt, and, you know, Danny had nobody but himself to blame, you know what I'm saying, again, he started off slow, and he wasn't listening to his corner, he was being more, I don't know, it just seemed like he was trying to look for that one punch knockout, now, I will say about Danny Garcia, um, it seems that him going up in weight, that he don't have the same punch, he don't pack the same power like he used to, um, so then he lost that Porter fight, so he was two losses back to back. And then I believe he picked up a win here and there. He fought, I think, uh, uh, I'm trying to think if he fought Brandon Rios before all that or if it was after. He definitely fought Granados after. Um, and then he fought uh, Earl Spence. Earl Spence at, by that time was holding, I think by the time he fought Earl, Earl Spence, Earl Spence was holding three belts. I think he had all, all, the, all the belts except for the WBO, which Terrence Crawford had, I believe, by that time. If not, then he had the, the IBF which was the, his original title that he won from Carol Brook, his, his first welterweight title. And then his second one he took from, um, uh, I'm trying to think which one it was. WBA, but I, I believe, I'm trying to remember who he beat for the WBA belt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had all three belts when he fought Garcia. If not, he had two of them, right? And so, this is after Earl Spence's accident and all that, and um, too much for too much for Danny, right? And so Danny lost that one. So at this point, Danny lost like uh, three out of, I think it was three out of. He lost three out of like five, you know, three out of four, three out of five fights, and um, and then he looked real good against uh, Jose Benavides Jr. in the 154 pound fight. He looked real good against him. I don't understand how the fight wasn't how he didn't win by unanimous decision. 
Um, I mean, because he was there. I mean, his feet, his head movement, he was going to the body. He was doing a lot of one, two, three punch combinations, two punch combinations, three punch combinations. He was going to the body, upstairs, upstairs, downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Somehow it was a split decision. I don't understand how it was. It shouldn't even have been close. I mean, I believe that fight was like, that was a 10-round fight, I believe. I, I believe I believe for sure it was uh, at three, like seven rounds of three at, at the, at, you know, which it could have been really eight, eight, two. Um, and, um, you know, he looked pretty good. But then when you start looking at these guys at 154 at the time, I think Charlo still had, was, Charlo was a big factor still. I think he had most of the belts besides Tim Zhu's belt, I believe it was. Now it's all, you know, you got a bunch of few different guys up there. You got Spence's up there again at one, or not again, but Spence is in the picture now, but at a different division. You got Fundora's up there. You know, you got a few different guys up there now. So, you know, it was going to be a, 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 a definitely, uh, you know, it was going to be definitely a, 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 a high mountain for him, you know, to be asked for him to climb. You know what I'm saying? Not to say it wasn't possible. Um, and then so this fight, you know, he gets in there. Lars, the, the reigning WBA super champion. Um, and they spoke about this fight like about a year or so ago. And at the time... Uh, Lara had was the WBA regular champion, and then at some point, the WBA super got stripped or was vacated or whatever, and they just automatically anointed him with it, you know. And they took the regular belt away, and somebody fought for that belt, and so he's the reigning champ now. He's ranked fourth in the in the middleweight division, so that means they got everybody else got a belt at 160. Um, the WBC, the WBO, and the IBF champions ranked ahead of him. Um, I believe that was. Uh, uh, I can't remember. I think that might have been Box Rec. Might have, might have had him as a or the fourth active, most active middleweight. So, anyways, you know, Lara was. He just kept Danny being. Danny was gun shy, and this has become a regular for him these last. Uh, you know, through four. Uh, let me see. They fought in uh, 2016. Him and Thurman. So, the past eight years, it's been real slow start for him he looks real slow you know he don't throw no punches he hesitates and he was doing the same with this fight and it was like the crowd was booing um you know Lara was popping him here and there keeping him and then keep in mind too it's like a um eight inch reach advantage difference Lara had like a 75 and a half inch reach advantage and Danny Garcia is 68 and a half so what would that be one and a half, seven inch difference. That's that's a big difference. You're talking about seven inches. That's like that much longer his arms are. And so that kept him out. You know, he couldn't come in, which he didn't really try. And it appeared that that two month, that two years off really, um, really uh, gave him a lot of rust and he wasn't, you know, loose. Um, and could that be just, could that all be it? What could that be just what it was? Or could it be that? And then something, we know he's had some, mental health issues over the years as well that was his last um layoff which was a pretty big one uh, where it was pretty um, it was a, a pretty uh big uh situation he had going on where he became very emotional in the ring after he won the Benavides fight um he like I said he took off a lot a lot of time there too so you're talking about within two fights he you know he took off close to it had to be at least uh three three years at least he took off um and keep in mind, these are these are years. Now that he's thirty six years old, those those three years, those four years he took off, those are prime time years, right, of his life, when it comes to being a boxer. So, you know, I think at this point, Danny's done real, real well for himself and his family as far as um, you know, uh, saving. <clears throat> I'm not really sure as far as his stocks and bonds. If he got all that stuff jumping off, uh, I would imagine he probably does. But we know that he owns. He's done well with for himself as far as um, businesses and real estate. He bought a lot of property in that uh, Philadelphia area, probably in the you know suburb areas as well. He also has businesses in the neighborhoods where he um, employs people from the neighborhood. You know, he's got a gym, he's got a barber shop. I think um, he has a few a few businesses, and those businesses can keep him living a decent lifestyle. Um, you know, as long as everything goes. Uh, as long as everything runs the way it's been running, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he's got his family and nice houses, and um, his sisters are music, are rappers, I think, or they might be R&B singers, but I think he produces them. 
or not produces them, but he, you know, he's the he's the he's the uh, management behind them. I believe I could be wrong about that, but uh, but he's got a boxing gym, so you never know. You know, maybe he starts training these these youngsters from the neighborhood, and before you know it, he's got a couple up and coming prospects. You know, young black kids and some Puerto Rican kids coming up. You know, through the streets of uh, Philadelphia. You know, who knows? But I think it's time for Danny probably to think about hanging it up. Um, you know, it'd have been sweet if he could have went out on top, you know, won that belt and and then retired. Um, that would have been the, the total package, right? But unfortunately, he didn't. He wasn't able to, to conquer that. And now, you know, his dad, this is what I didn't mention either. He got dropped for the very first time ever. He's never been dropped ever in a fight, in a professional fight. And he barely got hit with like a just a little left, a little... I don't remember if it was a left or right, but it was just a little straight nothing. And he dropped to his knee. And we're like, what the fuck? And then, he, you know, his dad was asking him between rounds, at, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the corner. Are you all right? Are you all right? Yes. I heard him ask him a couple different times, different rounds. And then he finally, dad said, his dad had it. That was it. You know, he could see that his son didn't, wasn't there. He wasn't all there for the fight. He wasn't there. Um, You know, uh, he wasn't there. Um. His head wasn't in it, you know what I'm saying? Now, not I don't want to make it like sound like an excuse, like oh, his head wasn't there. He was having issues with mental health or something. He might have been, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it could have been. It could have helped. It could have uh, got primed for the got. You know, his mental health might have been might have stemmed from him getting primed by being outboxed at first, and he got frustrated, and that might have turned into that. I don't know, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's just time for Danny to hang it up. He's 36 years old. Um, I mean, where's he going to go from this point? I mean, even if he continues to fight, he's got to fight lower-level guys that ain't ranked or nothing like that. Um, is he willing to do all that? And he's probably not going to get paid all that much money. So, you know, what? Is, I mean, I got no clue what he made on this last fight. I would imagine probably title fight. He had to probably make at least a, probably a couple hundred thousand, I would think. Cold main event, you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand. Um, you know, uh but after this, you figure he's going to be fighting kind of like journeymen or, 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 you know, older guys, older fighters, you know. Um, and to keep it real, he's got a, a tremendous record still. He's only got four losses, 30-something wins, four losses over his career. That's not bad, you know. Uh, I just think that's the best thing for him and his family. He's got little kids. You know, he didn't have older, he didn't have older kids. He's got, like, I think he's on baby two right now. It might be baby three. Um but his daughter, a couple years back, before his son was born, he, his daughter was like two years old. You know what I mean? So now she's probably about six or seven, and the son's probably like three or four. And I don't know if they had another baby or, or you know what I mean? But he's still, he got two babies. They're under 10 years old. You know, enjoy that time with them. He's been enjoying time with them because, he's like I said, he took off two years before this fight. And then before his last fight, he took off some time. Um, but he was dealing with not this last, uh, not Maybe even this break, too, this two-year break, maybe he was dealing with mental health as well, but he admitted the last fight. So I don't know exactly what's going on with him as far as all that, but I think it's probably in his best interest to hang it up and um, and enjoy, you know, the rest of his time living with his kids and his, fa- and his parents, his family, and, um, you know, continue to concentrate on his businesses and, and um, grow his businesses bigger or, you know, whatever. But he, thank God he's in a good position. He uses money wisely. And he'll be set, you know, for the next few generations. Uh, and so, yeah, so I think Danny needs to. Oh, and then what I was going to say was that was the first time he got dropped. And then this is the first time he's ever um, got stopped, basically, even though he didn't, he didn't, um, you know, get knocked down or the, or the ref stepped in it and waved it off. Um, it's still considered a, a, a knockout. Um, and, it, and they call it, R, I think it's called RTO, RT. RTO or something like that. But anyways, um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and tap on this one. At some point soon here, I'll be doing the my reaction to the Berlanga um, Canelo fight. Um, I'll just say this. I was very – Berlanga didn't look bad. He looked pretty good, to be honest. He looked pretty good. Sometimes he got caught slipping with his hand dropping, you know what I'm saying. Um, he knew it when he got caught with that hook. And when he hit his gloves on the ground, he knew it because they were working on that, him not dropping that hand. And Canelo threw that quick ass hook out there, bam, right. But, um, you know, he didn't do bad at all. Those fake, those those fake, those feet fakes. You know that he like, you know, he had he had Canelo on his toes. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so yeah, with that being said, Big Lou tapping out.